jobs. The people that are buying these cars actually are buying with cash. They got money, money. Right? <laughs> they and got they're not money. worried about depreciation. Because <laughs> yeah. until a certain point, uh, it's still a depreciating asset. Yeah. Hi guys, welcome back to Modern Barrel Men episode. Uh, today we got a special guest. Uh, it's kind of going off, um, you know, our last podcast. Uh, we got John Sadiq. Is that how, did I say it right? Yeah, you yeah, bet. Okay. You yeah, bet. so yeah. Uh, John, we thought it'd be, a, it'd be a different segment, uh, industry that we're kind of touching on. And we thought it'd be a good um, guest to bring on because there's a lot of stuff about John that we were intrigued about, you know, <laughs> when it comes to him starting uh, his... <laughs> I don't know about this. <laughs> You know, in regards to his um, working towards what he has today, you know, and his, his story, I think it will be an inspirational to a lot of people that are coming from the mud works to, you know, where you are today. They can seek inspiration and, you know, just give us a general background, John, just who you are and, uh, you know, what's your background and what you do currently. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um Start with the current because that's flashy and yep. exciting. And everyone <laughs> likes it. Um, I'm the general manager um, at Alfa Romeo and Maserati yep. uh, dealership here in the city. So um, yeah, flashy, cool cars. Yep. Some of the best <laughs> Italian manufacturing. Uh, we have Ferrari in our group as well. So yep. um, I spend a lot of time with the exotics. So uh, yeah, it's good. Um, Beautiful cars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's stunning, right? You guys yeah. got to see a couple of them. Yeah, we saw a couple of them. Like, man. It's crazy. Man, oh, man. So, uh, yeah, I, th that's what I currently do. I'm a mechanic by trade. Yep. Uh, so, licensed uh, journeyman technician. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, that's about it. And that was, like, one of the things, too, we wanted to discuss. Because, you know, in Brownhold, parenthood, what's that one thing when your kid's growing up? Do Especially doctor or lawyer yeah. and, and your background as well you're from pakistan as well yes right? so, yeah yeah so coming up from like even like the punjab region the pakistan is they kind of you know connected and seeing we have the same background the way we grew up with kids coming from you know the first immigrants uh the parents bring us here guess what the norm is what go to the basic trades nerd doctor nurse engineer or whatever but you chose mechanical engineering or be in the automotive industry because you yeah. actually enjoyed learning about cars yeah and, yeah and and you know for a lot of people you might you know testify to this your parents are not keen on hearing i want to go into you know <laughs> yeah, i want to yeah, be yeah. a mechanic or yeah. I, I love yeah. learning about cars so walk us through that process how that journey came about <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's um it's a fun, fun <laughs> funny story um started off uh, with with high school Right. And so I, I got into high school. I, I mean, I, I, as a kid, I had lots of cars. We had the old Hot Wheels, like real metal Hot Wheels, like yeah. the, the good ones, right? Uh, so, so I've always been around cars. Um, my dad's been a big car fan. He flipped cars all throughout his life. That's yeah. all I've ever known, right? Mm -hmm. So um, high school came around, and I got the chance to, uh, to pick some courses. So, of course, be, being the smart one that I am, I thought, you know what? Which, which of these courses gives me the most credit so I can graduate the fastest <laughs> or get out of school as fast <laughs> as humanly possible? <laughs> right? like, how can I get more spares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so then I was going through the list uh, and I saw a cooking class. So I was like, of course I have to take <laughs> cooking. Take yeah, yeah, how do you not? Because I get to eat at school. That's a new concept. Yeah. Um, and then uh, automotives. It was like double the credits. Yeah. yeah. So I thought, you know... Let's try it. Why not? Who cares? Like it's yeah. it's not real school. I get to slack and enjoy <laughs> it. So, uh, yeah, I walked into that class. Um, I didn't know the difference between a wrench and a ratchet. Didn't didn't have any any mechanical knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Um, my teacher at that time picked up on it, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I quickly became the class clown. Which <laughs> big surprise. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it just uh, it, that was kind of my introduction to it. Uh, I quickly quickly fell in love with it. Okay. fell in love with it it um it quickly became a passion of mine and i didn't kind of realize what was happening yeah so um that, that was that was kind of the the root of it how it started mm -hmm. um after that uh the choice to pursue the career actually came from uh it came from one of my teachers uh, it was a guidance counseling class and yeah. where they asked right you fill out your your yeah. test sheet and what it's what is it doctor that? lawyer yeah. I didn't even see comedian on there, so I knew I didn't have a chance, right? So, um, right, uh, we were going through it, and, and he just looked at me. He said, "John, if you had the choice, if you could 
go all day in school and there's one class you wouldn't skip, what's the class you wouldn't skip mm -hmm. that you would show up to school to go to? Mm -hmm. I thought about it. I thought about it. I said, you know, auto. I actually yeah. really like automotives. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, man, maybe you should do that as a career. Yeah. And that's kind of when it clicked in my head. I was like, oh, you know what? I could, that's a possibility. Yeah. I that's might be able yeah. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, this is possible. So. Uh, I remember I went home and I said, I said to my parents, they, they were asking, of course, like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? We're coming to the end of the year. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you better figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doctor or lawyer, which one? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, and yeah, I said, you know what? I think I want to be, I think I want to be a mechanic. Yeah. Like, mm. Oh, you! Hell no! Whoa, what, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you think the reaction was to that? <laughs> Mechanic? Are you kidding? Uh, so, so no, I, I got the whole. Um, listen, you're a small guy. Build wise, you're small. Like you don't like getting your hands dirty. Yeah. Mm. You, are you really gonna go out there and get dirty and change oil and, and all grease stuff. all over your hands and stuff? So you know what? No, I think uh, I think it's something I want to do. do. I yeah. think it's something I want to do. <laughs> so. Um, I mean, I, I'm going to say my my parents were reluctant mm -hmm. <laughs> when, yeah, I mean, when we first started. Because yeah, yeah. it, it's just not, it, it's not common in our yeah, culture. It's right? not. And, yeah. and you look at it as a dirty job. Mm -hmm. but, but the reality is, that, like, trades, the value of trades nowadays, oh, yeah. you can't beat it. Obtaining that skill, yeah. having a ticket. Yeah. I, I, let me tell you, that the second I got that ticket, doors everywhere opened for me. Yeah. There's uh -huh. opportunity everywhere you looked as soon as I got that ticket. Yeah. So, um, yeah, definitely don't underestimate the, the value of the, the trades. trades. Mm -hmm. Value agree. of the trades. So, um, yeah, ended up, uh, ended up I, I, I actually had to work that summer. My mom forced me to get a job. I think it was 16, 16 at the time. She said, no, you got to gotta get a job. Yeah. So uh, through high school, they had the like, work experience program. Oh, true. Yeah. So uh, at that time, they asked me where, which dealership I would like to go to. And my mom had just bought a Nissan X-Trail. This is kind of dating, <laughs> dating things, right? A new <laughs> X-Trail. So that tells you the range that this was in, right? Um, so I was like, man, can I go to Nissan? Like, I'd love to learn about Nissans and see. So. Um, my teacher got me a spot there in a, for a three-week practicum and got to just go mm. go shadow some guys, learn yeah. what it's about. Um, at the end of that, uh, I asked the manager, how did I do? He said, you know, you're all right. We liked your work. I said, great. Hey, can I, do you have a job? Can, yeah. can I work here yeah. full time? Mm. So uh, he looked at me and said, you know what? Um, I'll make it work. Mm. Saturdays come in, pay you seven bucks an hour, mm. and your job's to wash the floors clean the shop and wash the floors. Wash the floors. Isn't that crazy? Seven dollars. So seven bucks an hour. <laughs> back the back then, gas was a lot cheaper. Hey, but, way cheaper though. Yeah. Way but, cheaper. but still though, right? man. Seven bucks an hour, wash floors. I said, you know what? I'll, I'll take it. Like, what, what, it what, at, at that point, I didn't know any better. Right? Yeah. I didn't know there was other jobs out there. I thought, yeah. you know, this guy wants to hire me. <laughs> I was blown away that he wanted to hire me. <laughs> right? So I uh, started, started doing that. Every every Saturday, yeah, uh, yeah. came in, washed the floors. Crazy. Um, yeah, got yelled at, got told <laughs> I was washing the floors wrong, but yeah. learned learned a lot, yeah. learned a lot, right? And that's that was kind of the base of it. That's like your groundwork so, too. I feel like because like thing yeah. is like a lot of people these days they want to just get to the angle. You know, everybody yeah, wants yeah. to glorify making this much money, how to attain it. Everybody can get it. You know, like that that get rich quick scheme you know what i mean yeah. like attaining that shining object is a long way process and as you yeah. said at age 16 you put yourself out there hey, i actually enjoy this what can i do yeah good thing is like you know <laughs> it's so funny um i can relate this too because like i started working when i was around 15 14 around that time subway i think that back then it was like eight something i think yeah. the, uh, yeah. the minimum wage was <laughs> that's my yeah, first yeah. ever job yeah. when i started working i'm like it's just for the money but you know what i over realized I know it's just, a, it just we're working at Subway, we're just making sandwiches. Mm -hmm. But guess what though? My mindset was, I'm gonna be the best at what I do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, it's making a Subway, it's just making a sandwich. It's just making it, but guess what? When you put that dedication in your mind, but like, I'm gonna put the discipline to start now, my work will speak for itself. Good thing is a manager, they give you more responsibility given what they see on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you see yeah. what the work you're putting yeah. in, right? And, and my manager be like, man, you did a great job. That's unreal. Like, when you hear that, it gives you a sense of like, okay, yeah. I'm doing something right.
what well, people nowadays they want to skip all that journey they're like no i can't i can't be seen working at a subway i can't be seen scrubbing floors yeah. why the hell not what's wrong with you yeah. your hands don't work yeah. what but people want to just go to the angle be like glorify hey i want to be that you can't be that you ha- you you can't skip stage one two three four five six whatever stages it takes you mm-hmm. everybody has a different journey mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. know, can't skip that stage. And for you, John, I think that's what I feel like a lot of the inspiration could come from is people that are watching out there. Yeah. Just because you're in the position that you are today, you're thinking, man, I gotta scrub, I gotta come out here and scrub floor. No, man, change that mindset. And what I mean by mean by that is be grateful for the position you're in. Yeah. And if you start being grateful, no matter what position you're in in life, and switch it for gratitude. Mm-hmm. I always say that. Yeah. Yeah. So what that does to you is it allows you to grow as a person and realize, you know what, okay, I'm here, but how do I get better from this? How do I grow from this? How do I, okay, I am scrubbing floors, but how do I work from scrubbing floors to this position that I succeed? I see myself because I'm seeing these people. I can do that job, but how do I get there? Mm-hmm. It's not just showing arrogance. Be like, I don't want to do this. I quit. I'm going to go somewhere else do it. It's going to be the same story. You're going to quit today. You're going to start something new. You're going to quit again. You're going to start something new. Start from ground zero. And be grateful for the position you're in because people from all over the world will, especially being in North America, people will kill to be in your position, man. People will freaking kill to be in your position. You're telling me you're ungrateful for the opportunity that I've given to you. And we are here moaning about things. I don't got this. I don't have this. You have everything. No reason. I don't care. As long as we're in this country, I don't. I have no empathy for people that sit here and cry about I don't have this opportunity. You have all the opportunity. You just decide to not take accountability and don't want to put in the hard work to get to that point. Because as you said, John, what, what, like you are now at a position in life where you're able to enjoy this stuff. But this is when you're married. You have two kids. This wasn't like if you look ten years back, you weren't at this position. No, no, they, you know, not at all. And you know what, if you would have, anyone that's known me for a long time, if you would have <laughs> said this was the path, this was the trajectory. And uh, I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't believe it. Uh, I, exactly. to this day, sit back and uh, I've said it to my life a hundred times over. Man, like, how did, how did, it, this is far beyond anything I ever imagined even possible yep. for us. Right? Like, how, how do we, how are we? in the house that we're in how every bills paid we don't have any issues like that like like i just I, it's far more than I ever imagined it is yep. it could have been right yep. and the reality is, is if i hadn't started by doing that and kind of set a goal for what was next and what was exactly. next and what was next my goal was never never in my life did i think i'd become a general manager of a store like this with a brand that's so high in yeah. luxury, luxury like such yep. an, it just it was never i didn't no, I was capable. I, I thought you had to be born into it, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> that's just, right. People just put in those positions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. But, but it's um, it, it's amazing what what you can do when you really put your mind to it. And, and okay, yeah. so let's say so now you're with as you said Maserati, right? And that's you know the dealership you work with. How do you think people skill play into that? Because it's not easy to put yourself in a position to be a GM of that. Yeah. company as you said it's a competitive environment especially when it comes to automotive industry it's a cutthroat industry you're not hitting you're not hitting the bottom lines hey move on to the next one yeah. and it's not easy yeah. to because like in automotive is, is bottom line is that that's all it is yeah. and how do you go about like building your personal tra- your traits what are the struggles that you feel like in automotive industry that you know you, you could see you know maybe some certain changes or some things you feel like that could give an insight to someone be like okay put yourself strategically in this position to maybe you know prolong that process of you struggling in a certain area where you feel stuck at what's like the one thing that you could give advice in that um that's uh i mean uh, I know, that's it's fantastic a fantastic <laughs> it's a fantastic question um i i think a lot of it has to do with your personality and your personality traits mm-hmm. um i i found and so um We'll start. I, I don't mean to go into no, no, religion or anything no, no, like no, that. Good. But we were raised as as Christians, so everything that we were taught was in regards to a servant style of leadership. Yeah. And so when you're in a competitive market like that, if you can lead with a servant type of attitude, mm-hmm. you're going to set yourself apart. And for some dealer groups, that that's maybe the direction they want to go. And for others, that's not the direction they want to go. go. Yep. It's okay. You need to understand what your skill set is. 
what your traits are, what makes you who you are. Yep. Establish what that is. Me and and that, I say it so easily because I've had the chance to do it. That's probably one of the toughest things to do is figure out what's important. What do you value? Do you value money more than human relationships? Mm. Do you value your relationships with your people more than how much you make? Do you value your time more? Would you rather spend time here or somewhere else? Like all of those things build your character. Mm -hmm. So when you understand what's more important, right? M maybe you're at a stage of life where you know I'd rather go out and party than work. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. what you what you're doing and what you're putting in during the day isn't focused on your personal growth. You're probably not going to grow. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, it's just how what your mindset is and what yeah. you're focused on is, I think, where where you, the, the path the path I guess that, that you get led down right yeah and then I think understanding that perspective because I feel like what people a lot of people don't realize is um, in your lifetime there comes a part of selfishness mm -hmm. you gotta be mm -hmm. selfish at a certain part of your life to grow and put yourself in a position to whether it's monetary whether it's whatever it may be in your mm -hmm. career you have to be selfish yeah. what people don't realize is you know I'm not saying be an asshole, just <laughs> not yeah. understand yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. But I, you know, I saw this one report, uh, PBD. I put up this report about his uh, insurance company that he wants. Um, yeah. He said he did an evaluation after I think a year. He looked at his people that at the top level, uh, his agents that earned the more, uh, the most, and he looked at the people that were doing mediocre that weren't doing so good. Mm -hmm. Then he looked at the personality traits and he did a test on them. And then in the test, 70% of the top earners in his uh, under his insurance uh, agency, 70% trait of those people were what? They were selfish in their goals. Mm. And 30% was like, you know, being personality, uh, being relatable, or not being that asshole that he said. Yeah, but yeah. what people don't realize is you gotta be selfish at some point in your life. You can't be people pleasers. Yeah. And uh, what, what we get lost in today's world is, we always wanna just, oh, I can't do this, I gotta be, do, I gotta do, no man, be selfish. And yeah. I, 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 haven't, I haven't still learned that art of understanding, being selfish doesn't mean you're doing bad by somebody. You're yeah. not. You're not doing wrong by nobody. Just being. That means you're putting yourself first. Mm -hmm. That's all that means. And I feel like at a certain point, did you feel like you had to do that in your career? Like whether it comes to your friend circle, this that, where you had to differentiate yourself from that group. Where like you know what, I gotta, I gotta go away. I gotta be more selfish about yeah. my career. I put myself in a, you know, atmosphere where I feel like I'm first. There's no be like, yo, John, like, oh, why are you doing this? They're like, damn, John doesn't come out anymore. Yeah, oh, okay, John, you think you're better <laughs> yeah. than us. Yeah. I'm not better than you. Yeah. Just because I said, I want to be first, that don't make me better than you. Yeah. And, and in our culture, you've probably seen it. How often do you see that in a family and a friend circle? Yeah, it's um, it's interesting because you can be selfish, but but not not in that rude, rude like, like, yeah, selfish, condescending, Selfish can arrogant. mean so many different things, things right? Yep. And I've, I've had internally I've had struggles between my own selfish ambitions yep. and my goals I internally with me. I'll, I'll give you guys an example. I had a, um, there was one, there was one day I specifically, I remember this, so I'm shutting down the store. Uh, and I think it was a friend's birthday or something I was heading out to. So I was, I was closing down a store that I was running just a little bit early and I was like, yeah, yeah I want to get out of here. Like, let's go, <laughs> we can go hang out and right, uh, spend some time. And I was walking away from the door right after I locked it. And I heard, a knock on the door. I turned around and I saw a client. I mean, technically we were closed by a minute, right? Like it was, yeah. it was one of those. Yeah. And I just remember in my head, it was a, it was one of those struggles where like, okay, I have to make a choice here. Like and I, I don't know why this feels pivotal, but, but I feel <laughs> like I have to make a pivotal choice here. Yeah. Am I going to go back, open the door, do what's right by the client so that I work towards my goal of, at that time, I was just an, a service advisor. I wanted to become a service manager. Mm -hmm. So in my head, I was like, what would a service manager do? A service manager would open the door, door provide the service, service. La let the customer in, understand that it's after hours, put my own personal end aside. Yo, okay. And I in that sense, I was selfish to my goal. And I decided you know, that goal is more important than what I was doing outside of there and yeah. after the fact. Yeah. That, that type of selfishness, Right? And it was just because my goal was more valuable than what I was doing outside of there. Yep, exactly. Right? And, and not everyone understands this. Like I, I've, a lot of times in our industry, you end up spending more time there than you're supposed to or what you're scheduled <laughs> yeah. for. Just because there's Long a schedule hours. out there doesn't mean you're there for that scheduled <laughs> right, yeah, time. Like that's yeah. just what, what our industry is, right? <laughs> yeah. And so um, a lot of my family don't understand it. If we have a party set for a certain time, everyone's there on time. Mm -hmm. I'll get there when I 
when I can get, get there. there yeah. Right? Because at the end of the day, that party that we're going to or that event we're going to doesn't necessarily pay my bills at home. It doesn't take yeah. care of my responsibilities. Exactly. But what I'm doing before that, where I'm working and building my brand and my store and my all, all of these things, yeah. that that's what helps pays the bills. That's yeah, true. So what's what's a more value? Exactly. Um, that's, that's the one thing with family is like, <clears throat> even with my dad, my dad says like, well, we'll have these conversations, right? And I tell him, I'm like, hey, look, there are things that I'm doing right now to get to the point where I want to be, and I will have to make sacrifices. I won't be able to come to family events. I won't <laughs> be able to go birthdays. Even to tell my friends, I'm like, hey, look, like now I'm in a different type of friend circle now. Yeah. Um, j- it just gets to that point where the previous friend circle that I was in, they didn't really recognize, or did, I'm not really recognize, but they didn't see the true value of what I was trying to do and really appreciate the sacrifices. Because every time they'll ask me for a birthday party, like, hey, come through, I'm like, hey, I can't, I can't make you. I got, I got to do this. Because I was like, I know well enough, I know myself well enough, if I go to these events, my mind is not going to be free until I get the stuff done that I'm required, that I'm uh, expecting myself to do, yeah. right? And <clears throat> family, like even my dad, I was like, hey, like family time is very important. I was like, I, I do understand that. But I was like, hey, look, like you need to look at it long-term wise that you do need to make sacrifices just like how he did when he was washing dishes, doing all this stuff. He didn't have much time to, for family time. He had to pay yeah. the bills and meet ends meet, put food on the table. And I was yeah. like, I'm doing the same thing, but I just want us to get at this, this, this lifestyle of where we have to look at a bank account every time, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. be able to enjoy our life without looking at it. Yeah. And, yeah. But even before that, like, y- you have to make those sacrifices. Right. And p- people nowadays, like what we were talking about before, it was just kids. A lot of times they don't want to get their hands dirty at all. They mm-hmm. just want to jump to the gun and just get to into the position that they yeah. want to get into and make yeah. that salary. Right? Now, so we'll, we'll get into that more in regards to like, you know, bringing your kids in this environment yeah. more. Because, like, you know, I think that's the one thing um, people are straying away from their values. You know, we'll get into that mm-hmm. a little bit more later yeah, on. Yeah. But I think mm-hmm. just the environment we're growing up is kind of scary these days, you know, so. But going back to the automotive yeah. industry, one thing that I didn't want to touch, I was talking to Mook about, one thing I want to touch about is the, how cutthroat it is. And what I mean by that is certain times, um, the practices that are practiced in a dealership, I won't say they're shady, it's not ethical. I won't yeah. say shady. They're not ethical to what the industry set out. Because a lot of the times you do see a lot of people, they get a car, it has some crazy interest rates, they're paying crazy amount, where do you draw the line, like in regards to, okay, I can't do this. I can't do this to my client. You know, where do you draw that ethical line in between, you know, the shady practice and, you know what, this is not right. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people yeah. be like, they couldn't care less about that client. They'd be like, whatever. I'm, my, my I got my car sold yeah, and I'm done. I, exactly. Right? You know? So I, we, we talk about it, but it's another, it's another tick on the board. Yeah. And so and exactly. we have our leaderboards and our, right? It, it's, it's all there and, and it, it's good. It helps motivate the guys. Yeah. Um, I, I think just being a human and putting yourself in those shoes, right? If it was someone that I loved and, and cared about and, they were in this situation and they came to me. I mean, I, and listen, I'm not by any means am I trained on financial advice yeah. or what you should or shouldn't do. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but I think it's fair to put all of the options in front of someone to say, hey, you're coming in to buy a car. This is your financial situation. Here's where you should be. You should maybe consider these items prior to that. Yeah. We have uh, financial representatives that are very good. Mm-hmm. And um, I think. Uh, I'm going to segue that into the way that you build your team mm-hmm. and the team yeah. that you have around you. Because I, I can have one idea of how it's how I want it to work and how I want to operate my business. Mm-hmm. But if my finance manager or my uh, sales manager and all the, they're not motivated or they don't take the same direction or they're not moving in the same direction, mm-hmm. then they're going to do those things and then you run into situations where you have an issue. So I I think equally as important as the way that you approach it and and the environment that you build is, Mm -hmm. it's the team around you as well. Mm -hmm. And and that goes for every aspect of of life. That's not only, I don't think that's only the automotive industry or only being a manager, right? That's anywhere you go, right? You're you're as good as your people. And that's the thing that's why I feel like one of the traits, I think, you know, I, cause like I, I'm intrigued by, you know, franchisees and stuff. Like eventually I want to operate my own stores, but you know, this allows me to understand the full concept of owning one, you know, and majority of the applications when I was applying, right. One thing was like, Oh, how, what traits you want to see in your trainee, mm. right. Uh, or the employee that you're, that you're getting. I'm like the traits that I have myself. 
Because what a leader does is, at the end of the day, as, as he said, you look at a human level. I'm not better than you. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not above you. At the end of the day, if you're not leading by example, but not showing by example, no matter what facet of industry it is, whether it's, I don't know, janitorial role, that you're, you're showing them how to, whatever it may be. Good thing is, what impacts your employee more than anything is you showing the way. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I truly believe that. If, you're, if you think how to lead is... I'm telling them this, hey, do this, do that. It will never, it, it will never have the same impact as you leading by example. Because mm -hmm. that has, that leaves a greater impact. But like, damn, like, like even in my shop, sometimes, like, if I don't, if I don't like a certain thing, I do it myself, and then, then they feel like guilty, like, damn, I ain't good enough. I'm like, yo, listen, it's not about doing good enough. I'm like, I'm just showing you how to do it. Yeah. I'm like, that doesn't mean I, you know, maybe there's certain things I'm doing. Oh, you can show me. Mm -hmm. But this is how I want it done, mm -hmm. and this is what I'm building. This is what I want it. I'm not saying you know, be perfect. But this is how I want it to be. And guess what? Me just yelling at them, like, yo, you did this wrong. What's wrong with you? <laughs> da -da -da -da. It doesn't do no good. I, so I got to lead by example. Like, this is how it got to be done. So I think yeah. that's a good example in regards to the ethical, you know, dilemma that certain people that do face. You got to differentiate yourself in, okay, my team is built around my values that I want to see yeah. throughout mm -hmm. all, whether it's finance, whether it's at the... Um, at the, at the trades with mm -hmm. people that are fixing mm -hmm. the car, it's, it's not just one thing. Owning a dealership is not just, all oh, the people around me selling cars. No, 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 no. As, yeah. There's many segments, people who are working in the backgrounds, mm -hmm. people are the financing mm -hmm. roles, um, yeah. you know, people that are coming in, getting greeted, um, everything is it, top to down. I feel like if those values don't come from yourself and you don't possess them, and you just wrote them down on a piece of paper because you Googled what are personal traits yeah. <laughs> to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to see. <laughs> well, what would be good to have as a team? Yeah. 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 And then you just write yeah. that on a board. Okay, good. Yeah. Somebody's going to look at you. You don't even possess <laughs> those traits. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and I, I think there's a skill and an art to being able to stand up and say, guys, this is the direction we're going in. Yeah. Watch me. Watch me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? And, and so and, and that, that's where the benefit for, for me in the industry has been is I've – I've cleaned the floors, I've written the work orders, I've had the chance to build the parts, like yeah. all of these <laughs> things, right? Yeah. So it, w when someone's like, oh, well, what does he know about cleaning out the drains? <laughs> like, Trust I, me, I, I do. I've done it. Look, <laughs> let's pull it. I'll show you how to do it, right? Like, yeah. I'm not afraid. Yeah. Right? yeah. If, if we're going to write a work order, if, if every one of my team is busy with clients and we have a client come in, absolutely. Sit down. Let's do it. A little bit rusty, probably, but yeah, <laughs> let's let's do it, right? Yeah. And so, and that's how you build those relationships, not only with your people in the store, but, but that's how you build your client Clienties. base and you build your yep. brand, right? Like it's yeah. it, it's a brand where my clients know if they come in, they can come see John. And exactly. I joke about it. You don't call Maserati, you don't call <laughs> Alpha, you don't call the store. You're calling John, yeah. And <laughs> with all of my people, you're calling such and such. You're calling so so that. There's a face, the name, it's more human, it's human, more real. Yep, You're not exactly. just bringing a car in anymore. I've Personal gone through, I, I mean, I've, I've been with clients, I've gone through multiple cars, I've gone through life stages with them, I've been there when they had their kids and as their kids have grown up, I've been through clients that are going through separations, that, yeah. divorce, yeah. right? Like all of this type of stuff. And it's funny how much people will talk to you yeah. w when they're comfortable, mm. right? Like I, it, it's, it's amazing some of the client journeys that I've been able to be a part of because of that attitude towards it. Mm -hmm. And that's unique in our industry, which is why I think it's so sought after. Yeah. And that's, that's why that's you can true. build that brand, right? And I, and I think it's just more as a community, especially with like, with these high end luxury cars. Mm -hmm. That on that, I think you guys build more of a connection with the client than anything, because you guys want to see well for them. You don't want to just sell them a car just to sell a car, because it does no good. It ruins your reputation. Because guess what, the, your reputation's at line. Because oh, that guy sold me that car, man. Like man, he put me in debt. This that da, da da da. What good does it do you? And you want to talk about the circles, the circles that the clients exactly. are a part of, mm -hmm. the yeah. influence that they have. And, and I'm noticing this because it, it's funny actually. I, I wanted to bring this up. It, it, the, the circles are so tight and even in this city like it's a big city but it's yeah, small right small, yeah. the guys that you guys have had on here someone like Shafraz yeah. there's a connection there yeah him and I work together he's a brand ambassador for my brand he's brought a couple hockey players in right yeah. Kane Hyman those guys right yeah. he's brought them in um there's a connection there hmm. Lolly, you guys had a long yeah. tour with up no hockey right yeah. <laughs> what do you think he drives <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. and, and and so and then again uh, a connection there so yeah. so all of these 
people in that relation are all connected, connected or attached and they seem everyone seems to know everyone i got a land developer that happens to know this guy that owns the bulk of the wendy's in the city and then yeah. he's part of this group <laughs> and that and it's it's unbelievable how connected it is so it is. if you're doing shady business or you're you're just trying to get the sale out and hammer people into cars What's going to end up happening is you're going to lose not only that sale and that person, credibility. they're going to lose their five or 10 people that yep. have the ability to come buy these cars tenfold cash. Mm. I'm not willing to risk my business and my brand yep. Yep. on just one what customer to lose yep. that much business. It, it, it's not a good business practice in my eyes. Yeah. So that's why uh, that's kind of the attitude that I, the approach I take. Yeah. And I, I think people should look at that more. Um, don't yeah. look at the bottom line. Uh, look at, as you said, <laughs> Because as you said, like people like Shafraz or whoever mm-hmm. you surround yourself with, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a mutual benefit from each other because you yeah. guys are growing together, um, you know, as a personal development and on a business level. Because mm-hmm. as you mm-hmm. said, you can rely on him and they can rely on you provide. It's like, a, um, you know, it's like a value exchange, how you talked about in the previous one. Yeah. 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 You provide value to be like, hey, listen, you know, this is what we want and this is how we see our brand growing. And then he can be like, okay, I want to associate myself with you because this is how I see myself growing. Yeah. And when you have that trust and when you have the credibility, when you have that, you know, that vulnerability on a human aspect, not just a robot that just trying to make these sales, mm-hmm. yeah. you make more connection, man. You make yeah. genuine connection with these people where you can actually one day sit down on, you know, go to Cactus Club or whatever, you know, yeah. right next door, yeah. have a drink. Yeah. You know, and those things mm-hmm. are invaluable. They don't they don't come yeah. too often, you know, and uh, and that's the one thing that I wanted to, you know, dive into next was in regards to a lot of people want to buy these luxury cars. But, you know, the bank account, you know, it doesn't <laughs> emulate the same lifestyle that they want to portray, fair, fair, you know, yeah. and, and, and no knock to people. You know, this is not me disrespecting them. It just being yeah. reality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you and you, I feel like personally me, if you don't have close to a million dollars or whatever in your bank account or at least working towards something, you shouldn't touch a car that's two hundred thousand. What in the world? Like, what are you doing even being in that place? You want to buy it, work towards it, you know? So educate the, you know, the audience in regards to when purchasing a car such as, you know, a Maserati, whether it's a Ferrari or Alfa Romero, how do you go about educating the people? Like, hey, you're financing if you can't buy a, the difference between financing it and purchasing it straight up cash. Yeah. Um. And it's, like, yeah. it's 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 funny you bring that up because a lot of a lot of our business is uh, done done cash purchase, mm. um, and so I, I think it's a matter of our, our clients are just in a, a usually in a situation where they can better afford um, better afford to pay cash where, where their money's making them more money, money yep. uh, at at the time mm-hmm. right yeah. and, and that's really what it comes down to so um, I don't I don't think there's any playbook necessarily yeah um me personally if i can't if i don't have the cash to pay for it or the ability to pay for it at least uh, double like we were talking about right um then i'm apprehensive on, on those large purchases and yeah. maybe it's not quite the right time yeah I, like i mean i'm still, still a value guy <laughs> if, if it were me i'd be driving my infinity every day right, right? like so it, it, like it, there's there's a way to get a mix of all of that where you get the value in that but with you really need to be careful because if you're in a position where i guess look at this i've been leasing cars now i've been yeah. leasing cars for about 10 years being part of a dealer it's it's yeah. different keep up with it so um in that case if you have the ability to use it towards a business and and it makes mm-hmm. sense and it works for what you're doing yeah. then maybe you don't need the money up front exactly. cash if yeah. that's the route you're going but if you're doing it personally, then, then you got to relook at what this is, and and is there a, is it a need or a want? Want exactly as to what it is. And I mean, it's easy for me to say because I've been in a new car every year, right? <laughs> right. So it's just kind of a perk of the job. But the reality is, is if if I didn't have that perk, would I be in something new every year? Probably not. No, it yeah. just doesn't always make sense, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and f- financial literacy is. <laughs> tougher to come by nowadays there's a lot, lots of guys talking about it on tiktok and stuff. i don't know um it, it's it's what you're what you're comfortable with what your what your beliefs are right and some some people are grown up in, in at home and in a culture where that's a very important factor and some people yeah, yeah. Are, are never made aware of it right mm-hmm. and, and so you, you you see you see it all around you can only do so much to help yeah, yeah. that's true. Say, Here's the situation. Is it, yeah. and, and that's the thing, though, too. I feel right. like people don't understand between reality and status. Mm-hmm. 
They don't understand. There's a difference. Reality is, I can't afford this damn car, so damn well, don't buy it. (laughs) If you look at your bank account, like, man, I got, I'm struggling to make this month end. I gotta make this car payment. Why are you even in that position? You're co-signing with two, three people to buy a car, not a how a car. That's not a necessity. That's that. That's that's a want. You know, it's um, people get it misconstrued. Man, screw the status. You yeah. get the status when you get to that point. You work yeah. at it, and as you said, majority of the people that do come in, they come in with cash. They don't come in with three cosigners. <laughs> hey, I got three cosigners. Yeah. I'm good to go. Yeah, and it's me- not usually their only car. <laughs> yeah. Like it's yeah. it's a yeah. it's a toy, right? Exactly. And, and that's a level. I think that's a level to aspire to. Mm-hmm. Right? If you're if you're really talking, look at the people that are at that point. So what does it take to get to get that there, point? Yeah. And that's what you set your goal for. Mm-hmm. Right, that, and that's how you're going to get there. I, th- I think a lot of it is who you use as mentors and sure. what, what you look up to and, and who they are, right? You, you, you see guys, and like even, even for myself, anyone that comes and asks us, you know, start, start from the bottom, get as, gain as much knowledge as you possibly can, can. Yeah. Yeah. become the best in every single role, every single step, become the best you can possibly become. Mm-hmm. That's true. And if you're good and you stand out, mm-hmm. you'll move up. Yeah. And you'll move up, and you'll move up, and you'll move up, and you can keep going. Just try to be the best. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I think I think uh, <clears throat> going back to like you know not being able purchasing something that's you know out of your budget in a sense, yeah. right? It's a huge problem within our community too. It's glorified, bro. It's in glorified. Toronto, Toronto, they're like they're constantly comp- uh, competing <laughs> with each other. It's like. Well, first of all, what are you doing it for? <laughs> it's like you're gonna go back home and start crying that you can barely make payments, yeah. right? And it's just it's ridiculous because it's like, honestly, I also see it with immigrants too because they come here, you know, I don't know how they get the money for it or whatever they do, but it's just like they look at they can't even pay for the car insurance for it. Yeah. It's like why? Like I can understand that it's very depressing, it's very difficult to come here, start fresh, and do everything, especially with how expensive it is. Yeah. But it's buying such an expensive thing is not the route to go, especially with the if you associate with yourself those type of people that are just buying this stuff just for pure uh like happiness right that's not the right way to go it's just it's not right yeah. so it's just like what you're saying is understanding having having a good mentor having good people around you is a direct influence of like your life and if you don't have that then it's just very difficult to you know just being logical man i, I mean I'll, <laughs> I'll give you my own experience i was upside down on a brand new genesis that i bought for 40 grand at the yeah. time yeah. thinking i was 20 something years old and i I, man i had it figured out right i got it i got it so um actually one of my good mentors he um he he was my service manager at the time and i'm driving the car and i got it stuck on my driveway of course because it's rear-wheel drive and like it just i wasn't thinking all i was worried about was looking cool and having a turbo rear-wheel drive car right um he, he sat me down and he's like, listen, man, if you're going, if you're going to do what you say you want to do, if you're going to become who you say you want to become, if you want to become a service manager and do all these things, mm. y- you can't have a car that can't get you to work on time. Yeah. Mm. And I was like, oh, interesting. Shit, <laughs> That's right. how that works. <laughs> you're right. So I went and traded it in that, that, uh, that season I traded it in on a Santa Fe. Mm, brand new Santa Fe, okay. right? And I was just like, yeah, I got this. I got it figured out, right? Yeah, like, yeah. but at that point, I, I wasn't at a spot where I needed a new car. It was a, it was a want. Like there, there was no need for There's it. No I just, it, yeah. I chose to do it. So then it came a couple years later. I was like, man, like I'm upside down, like almost 20 K on this car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like how, how, how do I have a 2013 Genesis that I don't even like, or uh, Santa Fe that I don't yeah. even like. It's not cool. Yeah. It's not me. I don't like it. <laughs> and it, like, it doesn't make any sense. You yeah. can learn strategies. Like I, I learned at that, at that time, I had a general manager who was a brilliant man. He saw what my situation was. I went to him. So like, what would you do? He said, why don't we just lease you out of it? So mm. he's like, I'll get you into a, a Q50 at the time. Yeah. And it was um, very low spec, mm. base, base model, base spec. He's like, just keep it for two years. <laughs> Lease out of your negative equity. Your mm-hmm. payments are going to be a little bit higher. Like you're paying for a top of the line one, mm-hmm. but lease out of your negative equity. No. I was like, oh, interesting. That's interesting. interesting. Yeah. So what happens in yeah. two years? He says, you walk away from the car. Perfect, Wipe your yeah. hands, walk away from the car. Yep. And that started my journey into leasing. And I was like, wow. Mm, but if I didn't, it, like if he wasn't there, if he wasn't willing to educate, uh, educate me yeah. and really teach me the ins and outs of it, yeah. I probably would have still been rolling in that, just not knowing how <laughs> oh, to get so out of it, true, right? right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and so it's just, 
the people that you come across along your journey can make such a big make difference, effect, po yeah. positive or, or negative, right? Yeah. Like it's just such, it's amazing how different it can make. So it's not that you don't grow up and never make a financial mistake in your life, right? I've, uh, I've, I've done it. Yeah. So, yeah. It's right? normal. It happens. It's yeah. normal. I think, right? I think too is like, um, kind of touching upon mentor is as well, like for myself, like trying to progress to where I want to go, I, I really had a difficult time trying to find a mentor. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, maybe it was just because I was very egotistic when I was younger too. And I was very picky on who I was trying to associate myself with. Yeah. But now I'm, I'm like, I'm like, what I'm trying to say is like, I'm to the point where I, I, I want to say like, I still have, I, I, I have a mentor, but I have good people around me like Amr, I have Shaf, I have mm -hmm. other people that are good that have the same mindset to the where what we're trying to do is just make sure that we're able to educate the, the next generation. Mm -hmm. So my mm -hmm. question to you is like, how do you exactly find the right mentor? And, and how, how do you exactly pinpoint that this is a person that I want in my, in my life to lead me to where I want to go? Uh, yeah, that's, um, that's a super good question. Yeah. Um, I, I looked, I kind of again decided what traits I thought were important mm. in someone and so um the, the first the first thing i wanted to to look at is someone that in my eyes was successful yep. and, and, and that can mean something different to you that can mean right everyone yeah. can can consider that something yeah. different right in, in my eyes success was they've gotten into a position where they're comfortable financially mm. where, where it seems at least outwardly like it seems like they're all together yep. they, they've got it all put together financially they're done and then it was what is their life outside of the day-to-day -day look like what is their family life look like what does their yeah. home life look like you can be financially successful and then make a 20k paycheck and then go blow it in vegas every second weekend right yeah, are, are you social. what are you trying to fit fulfill yeah. what what does your heart look like what is, yeah. is your soul full mm. Yep, right? and, so and th those were the types of things i looked at and said okay i i'd like to i'm gonna try to emulate my kind of my persona around people that I see that are like that. And yeah. though that's what I looked for in a mentor was someone that I felt had all of that put together, together. right? Um, and, and you only learn that through time, right? And yeah, there's a dude. couple of guys that I thought, you know what, this is the guy, like he's, he's got it figured out. And then you learn a little more and you learn a little more and yeah. it's not always what it seems, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's true. I, don't, I don't think it's easy to find. It's not easy. Oh, yeah. it's, not. it's not, it's not, as you yeah. say, it's like, you know, knowing your right fit. You gotta understand where you are in life. Be logical about the decision you you make. You know, and you know, in regards to the auto, automotive industry, you know, you see so much these days. People trying to exploit through like, oh, like prime example, that uh, that one chick, Winter on Walia, John Walia. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, the man, yeah. the time. You know what's so crazy about these people is sex sells, man. These people, what's their fr front forward? What do they do? They put these people in the front for every single reel, every single reel. Yeah. It, they're making a mockery of this industry and our people are so like want to glorify this lifestyle i have this status for what surround yourself with white people man like you owning a 70 80 car while earning thirty thousand dollars a year no, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't make sense. makes yeah. zero sense you know and but you'll notice like <laughs> in those situations usually there's either a void that they're filling or there's areas of their life where mm. where you see mm, that that's, that's true, true. It, it's you're unhappy mm -hmm. and it, w when you're truly unhappy like that it spews out everywhere yeah. you, you can tell right like the i guess the aura of people you can tell when they're happy at home and they're happy with their life they're happy with the direction that they're going mm. every i shouldn't say everything else falls into place but it yeah. feels almost natural it does. everything else feels natural yeah, that's true so that when i'm at work i can focus on work because i'm happy i know i have no distractions outside of that that I, my home is taken care of. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. I don't feel like I have to watch my back. I, I joke about it, but it's hard to sleep at night it well, it it, no, it's especially so in an industry like ours, right? True, true, true. I sleep great. Yep. I sleep yeah. great, and maybe that means I lose a deal here or there. Well, that's fine. But I can sleep. Sleep, yeah. I can sleep, and I don't have to sleep when I open. I'm not worried about, <laughs> I don't have, a, you have to have a bat by my bed. Right? Like, you know what I mean? It's just, no, it's, so it's true, about, man. and that's how you how conduct you? business. Yeah. You have a peace of mind. You have yeah. a peace of mind. And, and, exactly. and then that's the one of the thing I felt like in our culture that, you know, one of the things, that's one issue is trying to live up to a lifestyle, being compared to other people. I got to be better than him. I got to get a new car. I got to get this, man. Screw all that. There's so much stuff issues in our culture as it is. 
and we don't understand like how this is a tearing each other apart rather than rising together. Instead of being like, yo, let's not buy the car, yo, let's talk about something different. You know, sit down, be like, yo, how can we have different talks rather than compete? You yeah. know, and one of the underlying issues that you know I feel like you you be helping a great <laughs> discussion about is marrying a different culture outside of you know being brown or Muslim or being Sikh, Muslim or whatever it is. But as you said, you're Muslim, but you guys background you guys, you guys are Christians, correct? Yeah. yeah. Mm. And and you're you're made outside of the culture uh, yeah. when it yeah. comes to you know <laughs> you came here. So it, this is like a touchy yeah. subject because like Mo can me have a different like he has a different outlook. I have a different outlook, and you have a different outlook because yeah, yeah. our outlook is like okay, a lot of people now are straying away from a culture. Mm -hmm. How do we? figure out okay even if we do want to pursue a relationship outside of our culture but how do we carry that culture torch forward because at the end of the day we're the only generation that's left to carry it on to our kids after our kids there's no one if we, we don't take the onus upon ourselves you know who will so walk us through that you know being in a you know in a relationship outside your culture how how, how was that how did you go about that because like because it's not easy right i would i even think about it, like in our culture like even thinking about screw a different culture yeah there's people don't want to get made outside of a caste yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> screw it's a true. culture they don't want to get made outside of a caste so you know true, true. you probably opened so many doors and you know yeah. and yeah just walking through that chain <laughs> a lot to yeah 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 um I mean, it's not easy. <laughs> uh, no, it, honestly, it starts off uh, kind of with me, with, with who I am. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I mean, I, I guess I'll make sense of it. My grandparents uh, were first generation. Uh, they came here. Uh, my mom was born uh, in Pakistan, Pakistan but yeah. came here young. Uh, my dad was born. He came after they were married. Mm -hmm. uh, so my sister and I were the first, uh, were the first that were born here. Mm -hmm. um, I deviate from the culture more than my sister does. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why. I think it's maybe just personality. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm very much of the belief of if you can make it make sense and I can understand it, yeah. th then I'm willing to follow and understand. Um, just because it's part of our culture or don't. just because it's part of our religion it isn't enough for me, right? Like I, I always ask for, for more. Like I just want to understand more yeah you so don't want to go off fallacies things, yeah, 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 yeah exactly yeah. and if we're doing certain things i want to understand what and why and and, and what's happening with that right so yeah. um traditionally i've always been the whitewash <laughs> one if you want to <laughs> you want to call it that um so yeah my uh my wife uh, right wife. now we yeah. met in, uh, you're like wait hold on let me <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm thinking about the story and i'm like a friend at the time yeah. well, hopefully girlfriend no. uh, <laughs> so i m my wife and i we met uh we met in high school yeah um her uh, her family uh their her mom's sides uh from england her dad's fr sides from hungary mm. uh, they grew up all over bc and then uh moved out to edmonton yeah so um yeah, very uh, culturally Cult kind of one. One's yeah, going this way, one's going this way, way, right? Yeah. More European, um, you can say. Yeah, sense, yeah. yeah. So um, we, uh, I, I met her in, in high school. We met uh, first day of high school, and I was like, man, like this girl. Uh, <laughs> Who is she? Okay, <laughs> they are right. <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, I mean, we were just talking about this a little bit. I, <laughs> high school happens, right? We, uh, we were dating for a day <laughs> it was a, back then that was a long time that was uh, and then, that anyway, was an eternity yeah we um we ended up splitting up but whatever so after that after that, day, after that day it, it, after, after, after that after one it was traumatic <laughs> it was traumatic um but yeah it's uh we stayed friends uh we stayed friends all throughout high school and and stuff like that yeah. so um stayed close and then uh, we hung out spent a little more time uh, actually after high school and that's when we uh we started dating yeah, uh, yeah. i want to say around 19 19 years old um it's funny because she used to actually uh, come to my house and uh one of my aunts she's uh, uh she's a teacher uh, she's uh, actually a retired vice principal now but she was a uh, biology and chemistry teacher at the time oh, cool. so um uh, my wife used to come actually, actually come over and study uh, oh, wow. with me. So we were in the same classes, <laughs> classes and so before yeah. finals and diplomas and stuff, yeah. she used to come yeah. and study with me and everything is good. Like we're good. We're learning. <laughs> it's all good. And then, um, yeah. And then 19, 19, yeah. um, 
I was like, yeah. yeah. So we talked and, and we started dating. And I was like, hey, like, which is pretty cool. So then yeah. she's coming around the house a little bit more. And Pants are peeking through the door. <laughs> right, <laughs> What's right. Going like, on? So, so we're hanging out. We're spending a little more time. <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's kind of when my parents are like, hey, like, what's going on? I don't know. Like, I don't know if she, she doesn't really fit in with us. And, and so yeah. I, and, and I want to, I want to preface this because I, I am a younger parent now. My, my kids are both young. Mm. Um, and I look at it, I, I'm going to go a little bit off, off on a tangent here, but no, it's at this age, like I still look at myself as the kid. Mm. Like in, in my eyes, I'm still young. <laughs> how, how am I supposed to have all the, all the answers as a parent? Mm. Right. And I, I'm sure now looking at it, my parents probably felt the same way. Mm-hmm. Right, they, they didn't know because I mean at that age we we don't see it that we're just like oh my parents are trying to oppress us Yo. and they don't know what they're doing and exactly. life's different here and like like all, all of these reasons and logics and and excuses and things but yeah. they at that point they were probably just doing what they knew best to do the best to do yeah. and and they're trying to do exactly what you're saying right protect the culture protect so yeah. because they're worried if if it doesn't get passed down yeah what's left what, left, yeah. what happens right. So if it's not through us, who's it, who's through? it through? And yeah. now it's going to be, and now those types of concepts and ideas are starting to creep into my head. Like yep. what, second guess w- what, what do we pass down? What do yeah. we do? Right? Like the certain parts about the culture. Now I know I'm, I'm happy to pass it down so long as I understand Stand it. it. Exactly. Right? And, and mm-hmm. if it makes sense, it can't just be like, just because this is the way it's always been mm-hmm. isn't sufficient in my eyes. Yep. Like I want to understand it. If it makes sense, then, then all day. But yeah. at, at that point, that, that's all they knew. So of course a white girl coming into the house. <laughs> it's true. Yep. What, do th- what do you think? Yep. Right? Yeah. So um, we battled a little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. She wasn't allowed in the house for the first year, <laughs> like like that type of that type of stuff. So like it was, that makes it sense. was rough. <laughs> um, we were yeah just kind of hanging out. <laughs> I mean, how does she? I don't want to say that? sneaking around. How, but does, like, she, sneaking how does she around. take that though? Like, did um, she understand the fact that, like, why that was? No, you know what? Because it's hard, man. Because, like, they grew up yeah. in an environment where it's more open. You, yeah. you date who you want. And yeah. as long as they're treating you right, you go for it. In our go culture, like, no. No, no, no. That skin is different. <laughs> She's different. No, 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 no. Value's different. So she got to yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and it's, it's silly because, like, I, I look at what she had to go through. Yeah. I'm just like, oh. It's a hell of a person. But I probably would have never done that for someone at that age. Yep. Yeah. Hell no. <laughs> There's no, no, right? And, and n- n- not that my parents were doing any of this with malicious intent, but they, they were just doing what they thought mm. was right. Yep. So then, then you're stuck in a situation where it's like, they're trying to do what's right. You're trying to mediate between the two. Two, yeah. But also you're interested in this. And what if, what if they are right? I mean, what if she doesn't fit the culture? What if she doesn't, she can't, blend in well what if this and that and then but but then i started asking well, what are the things that she needs to blend into exactly why does she what are we blending what, what what's what does this mean it's it's all oh, well it's, it, she doesn't greet everyone at the door okay is that a cultural thing or is that a traditional thing what what's important, important like yeah. what, why are we doing this what like help me understand mm-hmm. so that it makes sense because if she's she hasn't grown up with this she doesn't know it's such a foreign concept. Concept, yeah. Like yeah. She, she was never raised every thirty yeah, minutes yeah. making chai for everyone yeah, and making sure everyone's <laughs> orders set, right? Like, yeah, yeah. The girl doesn't know. Yeah. No. no so no, no. how can you expect her to come into this home? Mm. That's true. And just instantly know. Yeah. Right. Like, and, and so, uh, what I what I did is I, I sat back and I looked and I was like, man, like, I I kind of saw what she got subjected to, and so to be willing to stick with me. So for, first off, at that point. I mean, we're still barely off of washing floors. Like, <laughs> at this point, I might have been changing oil, right? Yeah. So, like, I don't really have anything going for me at the time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And then all She's this additional there. stress from the family yeah. and stuff like that, like, it, it made it so tough. So I looked at it, I said, man, like, I don't know if there's a girl that would be willing to put up with this. Like, anyone else, 19 to 20 years old, are they willing to put up put with up everything, everything that yeah. she's put up with yeah. just to be with me? That's true, that's true. <laughs> Probably the right girl, then. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's a hefty it, ask. And, yeah. and, right, right? And, and she was doing that when we had nothing. Nothing, see? Right? Yeah. That means there's something no, there. No, yeah. no. Nothing That's, special. I had a cool car, but that, yeah. Was, yeah. that was it, right? Yeah. 
Like it, there was nothing there. And so the foundation that was built was very, was very strong. Strong, yeah. Mm, that's right? key. That's, and I think, yeah, that's the one thing though with even today, like dating, right? Yeah. It's, it's just, there's this some sort of, uh, of course, some social media is a huge play mm-hmm. towards it. Mm-hmm. And it's just yeah. with, with dating now, it's so temporary. It's so short term. It's just because you're just seeking this like, this the end goal of like being rich and just living this life but you're not understanding as like the process of trying to get there with a partner yeah now it's just out yeah. now it's just to the point where it's just like oh if a man is like man the man has a mindset of where he wants to go and you know let's say she, you know he has a girlfriend whatever but the girlfriend has a different mindset it's just like oh like this person's not in the in the state that i want him to be yeah. he's not willing to take care of me but he has a mindset for it but it's just like what they don't understand is like you need to have patience like that's mm-hmm. that's what truly valuable about that relationship is that you've been through it uh, thick and thin right like yeah. you've been through it for yeah. through, through everything that's what beautiful what's so beautiful it's not valued anymore mm-hmm. and yeah. that's that's the one like you know of course like that's the beautiful thing that you have right is just having that type of relationship that's someone with you even though it's somebody outside your religion mm-hmm. and so. you know that's the thing i feel like what John um, said is differentiate what a religion is and what traditions are. Mm. Differentiate yeah. those two things. Uh, so what I mean by that is, um, you know, when you talk to a person, like even myself, when you talk to someone, um, I don't judge them because, oh, you're not cultural. Or you, you, don't, you don't focus on religion, man. What's wrong with you? Mm. I'm like, okay, let's sit down. I'm like, why don't you follow it? Because why? Because a tradition make us hate the thing that we're supposed to love. What I mean by that is, let's take, for example, in our culture, you marry someone outside our caste, quote unquote. In our Bible, aka the Quran side, nowhere it says marrying outside of your caste or caste even, it doesn't even take place. Caste is not a thing. You marry no, the no, person no, that's, no. you know, if you want to, if you are adamant about marrying someone in your culture mm-hmm. and you both come to a, you know, understanding, okay, that's a different thing. Yeah, but man. our cultures eroded the understanding between culture <laughs> and uh, what our religion states to traditions. Yeah. Marrying outside of your, uh, tradition is a crime. Says who? Yeah. <laughs> Says who? And you know, and then people see that. Guess what? The unhappiness of in our parents because they don't even like each other to a certain extent because mm-hmm. so many mm-hmm. fights, so many because they were just married off because that was the cast to be married off mm-hmm. into rather than the person they thought that was right for that person. Mm. See, and the foundation's different. Foundations. And, and then how are you supposed yeah. to carry that on to your kids when you don't when your foundation is built on what with no cement with no basic you know of necessity that you need to build a house it's like you know building a house crooked and expected to stay like that the whole life and no yeah, it's gonna no. fall one day and it's gonna fall down bad and it's gonna carry on to your culture so i think one thing that i have learned is to have conversation with people why do you feel a certain way? I'll be like, okay, have you studied that? Have you looked into it? And then I'll be like, okay, you know what? I haven't either. Let's look into this more and come to understanding. If you don't like it at all, that is fine. Stray away from me and stick with the value, right? Mm-hmm. But understand it, educate yourself <laughs> on it, then make an educated guess. But now it's just like in our culture, we don't look at that stuff. We look at a traditional value. This is how it's been, okay? You, can, you can't tell me one thing in a grunt side that says this thing is how you're supposed to treat your partner. You know, a lot of the stuff in our culture, I see so many people, man. It, it is crazy, the condescending things they say, whether it's a Quran they read. It has nothing to do with what they're doing in their lives at not one bit. But they have the audacity to tell you, you marrying someone out the culture is wrong. No. But you go, to the, you go to the mosque every day. You go to the Gurdwara every day. You go to the uh, church every day. You don't even preach the thing that they preach at the church mm-hmm. <laughs> in mm-hmm. your life. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're the audacity yeah. to tell other people that you're wrong or this is not right or why you make someone outside your culture, this, that. And my values in our core is aligned and my kids being end up being in a successful position. They're good. They're not, you know, they don't have these issues when it comes to mental health, depression, this, mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. You know, and then in regards to you, John, like, how do you navigate that, man? Because it's not easy in this world. There's so much social media have this such a kind of like a grip hold, man, on, yeah. on, on the youth. Yeah. 
how do you navigate that? Like even like putting, you know, stop time. Hey, time's done for today. No more of that <laughs> iPad or phone, whatever. Because yeah. yeah, yeah. we had to get our phone until what? Well, my first phone was grade 12. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> had to work go. for yeah. a shitty yeah, Android. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I worked for it. Yeah. I was joined. That Android was like an iPhone for me, you know? <laughs> but nevertheless, yeah. now is everything guaranteed. You have to give it to. How do you navigate that, man? Mm-hmm. It's not easy. Yeah, it's it's tough. Like I, I'm, I've been lucky enough to be a younger parent through all of this. So mm. my kids are are getting to the age like my daughter's eight, my son's three. So they're they're still small. They're, but it's a big it's a big part of it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of made a choice. Um, it's always been something that I like. like uh, I, I'm kind of a kid at heart. Um, to tell you the truth, <laughs> which is why I say like yeah. me in this role, like it doesn't make sense. If you really know me, you're just like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Right. But, um, I made a choice to be as active as possible, yep. as active as humanly possible, possible with them. Right. And so enough that I can still provide for the home so I can be where I need to, when I need to, mm. but I don't want to miss a uh, dance class. I don't want to miss a swimming lesson. Yeah. I don't want to miss a soccer game. It's so important, like, man. like that, that, that's where I, I think that's where you build that relationship. Exactly. And that's, what's important. Right. So, um, I, I focus on that as much as possible. Mm-hmm. And, um, that's probably the biggest, one of the biggest stresses Yeah, is trying to juggle and balance. How do I be as present at work as possible? and do the best that I can and continue to grow. And often that time, that demands a lot of my time and a lot of my effort and my mental capacity. And then how do I go home and still do that? Right. And and I, I I haven't found an answer yet. Right. Some days it's better here. Some days it's better here. Right. And so I, I think the most important thing is just trying to be, there and available right yeah that's um, very it's very tough true. though because yeah so for example like <clears throat> like my dad had this um, i had a conversation with my dad and i used to play starting when I was first the first sport that i played was soccer yeah. and i played that till i was 16 years old and then what he would tell me is like wh- when he first put me into soccer he had to take a loan out to put me a, to, for the registration to pay the fees and all that sort yeah. and i was like and I was like, okay, well, I was like, okay, you're working two jobs. You're taking care of the house. You're, you're taking uh, me to soccer, to track and field, all this stuff. I was like, how do you do it? He's like, I just had to. He's like, it's, it's, he's like, it's tough. It's really tough. It, it gets on your mindset. But he's like, but I told him, I was like, I was like, look, look at it this way. I was like, if you didn't do that, I was like, I wouldn't have the mindset that I have now. Yeah. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be the have the mindset that where I'm in the position that I am the the confidence that I have because like what people don't recognize is this if you played sports if you play for a team that builds you it builds your confidence builds your yeah. self-esteem and that gets carried yeah. over into your career life into your personal life as well yeah. Yeah. and if we if we didn't have our parents to put us into these sports and stuff we wouldn't have that type of uh, foundation yeah. right and it's really tough because then it's just like what you're saying it's just like you have a career life you have a personal life family kids it's just really tough to juggle everything because it's just like where do you find yeah. time to juggle everything? I feel like that's just yeah. part of life, though. I think as we grow up, we understand because that conflict is always going to be there. You, there's no such thing as a, a perfect uh, picture in your family. There's never a time where like you know what you're gonna go through conflicts. Your kids not gonna understand a certain thing. The sacrifices yeah. you put in. Sometimes you have to neglect certain thing, but that's just the process. It is. I think. You just gotta understand the core values that you gotta instill in your kids mm-hmm. are coming from mm-hmm. a place where you're leading them towards a successful path, yeah. not out of a, you know, a selfish path. What I mean by selfish is like you don't want to put in that work as being a father. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people do neglect the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they don't go to that game. Uh, you know, a kid lights up when they see their dad in the crowd. You know, the, uh, people don't oh, understand yeah. the difference yeah. that makes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, it's it's funny because. Um, and, and kind of leading back to my parents and, and our culture and the way it is because honestly active active fatherhood in our culture is yeah, yeah. it's, it's, no, it's neglected less, less, co- less common than I'd like less for common. it to be that's true it's <laughs> neglected like, to like, like, honestly, honestly right it it, it's yeah. less common yeah so uh, I it just uh, I remember it was uh, my daughter was young I'm gonna say a couple months old mm-hmm. and uh, I think my parents and uh, a couple uh, of my aunts and uncles were over yeah and I was like oh I'm gonna go put her down but I gotta go take her for a bath first <laughs> and so I went upstairs and my wife was downstairs. I, I don't know what she was doing, yeah. uh, but they came up. They're like, what are you doing? You're doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're giving her a bath. I'm like, <laughs> Time up. And, and so like, they're confused. Like, what are you doing? And I'm confused. Like, 
<laughs> what have you been doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's my kid. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Like, it's normal. Wait, what, what do you mean? What am I? What, what do you mean? What am I doing? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm parenting because yeah. I think I'm a parent now. Yeah. yeah. Right. And and so it's just like it's it's funny that our culture is, is so much so that that the, the father takes a such back a seat. backseat yep. role, role yeah. at home. It but does. but I mean like I, I made a choice like that's not going to be me yeah, like, like I enjoy these things mm. like this is part of growing as a parent like mm. I'm learning every day yeah. so of course I want to be there <laughs> of, of course I want to do the things with the kids like why 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 wouldn't we yeah why does everyone else get to have fun it's true mm. though it's true, it's true. and I right? feel like it's gotta yeah you, you gotta understand your core values um yeah. and I can even like as you said someone that might be in your position that's looking outside of the culture understand what you're getting yourself you're not doing it out of spite you're doing it out of what you genuinely feel for a person if yeah. you are with a person that's outside of your culture understand sit down with your partner be like hey you know I do care for the culture side I do want to carry certain values sit mm -hmm. down come yeah. to an understanding with yeah. each other. I think that's important, communicating. Yeah. Whether, you know, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Christian, or you're making Muslim, whatever it is, come to an understanding, be like, hey, this is what I feel like I see my life being, and this is how I want my kids to be raised yeah. in this environment. Mm -hmm. If you can come to that understanding, I feel like, you know, this whole understanding of Mary outside your caste, mm -hmm. this, that, what for, man? These mar the marriages, now you look at them, man, they, I mean, it, look at the divorce rate. Divorce rates, right? the oh. highest they ever look been. Look what's happening, right? But that's because, because why? And so it's it's funny because I I I always think back of like, man, if this girl was willing to do that for me, yeah, she ain't going nowhere. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> you got a you real, know, you got a real like, one like, in your corner. You don't put in that kind of work to just drop it drop after it something over something small. Yeah. yeah, and that's what it feels like. You have a little bit of an uh, argument, or it, finances aren't going this way, or someone wants to, right? Like, yeah. it's none of that. Yeah, yeah. We never have to worry. If you were willing to put up with, like, it's kind of in a real roundabout way. It's kind of a gift that my parents were as rough on her as they were. Yeah, because mm -hmm. now it made it to who she right? is today. And then I think yeah. then one of the things that I feel like in a culture lacks me as well is understanding the financial side of it. What I mean by that is a lot of people today, they want to be so independent. Like, well, I want my own bank account, da, 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 this, that, like the joint. You're in a marriage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's mine is yours, what's yours is mine, you know? And understand what that means. It doesn't mean, oh, I own your stuff. Oh, what are you spending money on? That doesn't mean that. It, it, it doesn't nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people be like, well, I want my own personal bank account. Okay, are you like running some sort of For drug what? thing? <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, are you running some sort yeah. of a cartel that I don't know about? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. what's going on? You know, and a lot of people have this mindset now, be like, no, I want my own freedom. What is? What do you mean? Am I am I extraneous with the chain? <laughs> like, so you're trying to be independent. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, like, yeah. we, we yeah. build these relationship on fallacies that have an open-ended communication on all facets of life. Mm. Parenting, how do we want to go about it? Yeah. Financial side, how do we go about that? And sit down and talk and come to an understanding this is how our kids become successful. Yeah. This is how we carry our quote-unquote cultural values. This is a, your values, yeah, they might stem from your parents, which comes from a more religious, more um, restricted side because they didn't know any better. But you, we have the opportunity to give them that more freedom and understanding. We can have a conversation about this stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can do these yeah. things different. Yeah. So yeah. I think we gotta just promote that a little bit more and understand, you know. It's um that side it, of the world. It's it's funny. I'll, I'll tell you from my experience. And everyone's experience is different. And if you're in that stage of life, you, you'll understand that it's not always straight, straight, narrow, right? Yeah. But um, I, I was lucky enough that I've been I've been blessed enough to make a good amount of money where I was able to keep my wife at home yep. since it, a little bit before my daughter was born. Yep. Um, so originally I, I liked, <laughs> I liked the idea like it, this decision. Yeah. I mean, I, I suggested it. I, we had this discussion, but it was out of, I look back <laughs> at it now. It was an egotistical decision, decision yeah. right? for me to be able to be like, yeah, don't worry. My wife's at home, home. Yeah, at, yeah. at 26 years old. My <laughs> wife's at home. Don't I'm worry him. about it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it started with ego. And, and then once my daughter was born and then I saw the time that they got to spend together, it, it moved away from ego and turned into my responsibility, mm -hmm. mm. right? And so I, I've, I've made the choice to say, and, and my deal with my wife was, if you're not making three times what childcare is, 
yeah. I don't think it's, it's, it's worth, worth it. it. Yeah. And then that, that's just my my belief. Mm-hmm. Why are we paying someone else to raise our kid for an extra what? Five, six hundred bucks out yeah. in our pocket. I agree. Yeah. Why? And that's a I'd random. Rather, I'll sacrifice <laughs> a little bit. I'll, I'll try to work harder. I'll try yeah. to get us to a point yeah. where we can make that money still. Mm-hmm. And you can stay at home. That's true. I mean, we're yeah. coming up on just shy of um, you know, be eight, so yeah, nine, almost nine years. That's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. go for almost, you guys. Almost man. nine years she's crazy. been at home, and I mean th- that brings its own challenges. But the reason I've been able to be successful to the point that I have been is because she's been at home. She supported me. Mm. I, I don't, I don't need to run out in the middle of the day unless there's truly an emergency. Yeah. yeah. I don't need to go pick up my kid because the other parents not like, like she she's made it possible for me to be as good at as I am at what I am. Yeah. And she supported me throughout the whole thing. I yeah. couldn't have done half the stuff. And you ask any of the people I've worked for or even some of the owners of the dealers so like John like I understand why you're good because I met your wife. Wife, yeah. Exactly. And that's why you're so stable in what you do. Yeah. Because she's as good. Honestly, most of these guys end up liking her more than me, but I still get the job. <laughs> so it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's fine with me. But, but that's that's exactly it. And, and that that's equally as important and I don't I don't think people put enough emphasis on that uh, nowadays when you're looking for when you're looking for someone to yeah you're right part partner with it's not yeah right? it's not a hierarchy oh you know, I'm yeah. a man I'm bigger than no. you no. No, 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 no it's 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 also like to it's um, motherhood is undervalued too yeah. right it's it's not an easy job I'm, well of course not I can't listen yeah. <laughs> but, but, but come but, to our house and listen to you <laughs> during the day you're gonna yeah. learn real but, fast but it's like like what's similar to yeah. you know like you 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 understand what your responsibilities are you know that you have there's some sort of ex- you set yourself expectations knowing that you need to take care of your family you know she's home she's taking care of the kids mm-hmm. i have a similar like perspective that i want in my life yeah. like i want my wife to be home you know i don't i don't have anything against with her working and stuff like that. but my priority is that if i'm going to have a family i want to make sure that the person that's taking care of my children is is my own wife because nowadays, yeah. what's happening in school and daycare is like I can't trust that. Yeah, but who's gonna care more for that kid than you or your wife? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, like, That's true. like really, yeah, yeah. And that, That's true. that was my attitude. Who's gonna take the best care of this kid? Because the only thing I care about now, yeah, is this kid. And yeah. then when my son came along, it's these kids, yeah. right? Uh, but but that's. That, that's why we do all this. Yeah, I took, I, I, there was a point in my career where, there, where we were looking at putting more hours in and, and things like that. I took a six figure pay cut to spend mm. an extra hour and a half at my house mm. every day with that's my kid. See, people don't, people don't want right? to do that though. Yeah, people like, don't. Yeah. Most important hour and a half of my life. life yeah, right? Man. The most yeah. valuable time, the kids in my arms, get yeah. to spend time with her instead of three, four days I go without seeing her. Yeah. What, like, why? Why are we working <laughs> yeah, at that working point? Like, what, what, what are what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. To what avail? Yeah, and right? it's even it's even now too, like how, what the divorce rates are going on. I'm pretty sure you guys have heard about that. I forgot his name. That soccer player, that had the divorce with that uh, with that woman. How, um, frick, I forgot what team he's on. But basically, like, yeah. you know, I don't know. Like, he was like 24 years old. His, oh, you're his, talking about. Um, Rick, what's his name? The Moroccan star. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Moroccan yeah, yeah, star. Yeah. yeah. So like, even that relationship itself, Hakimi, like, Hakimi, Hakimi. Yeah, like that relationship itself, like, it didn't last that long. Like, it, it, all these, all these marriages they're rushing to, you know, they're not really like, they're not really assessed and based on like, hey, like, are you truly that person that I want to be with, right? Like, do you have those qualities as a mother, right? That you you can you can be you can uh, take care of the children, and I'll take care of my part. I know well enough. Because eventually, I mean, for ourselves too, as men, we know well enough that we need to be at a point where we have this financial clock, right? We want to be there so we can take care of children. There's a reason why so many of these guys that are, I'm kind of going off topic a bit, but... Oh, they're neglecting their responsibilities. But but that's, what is that routed from though, right? They, they enjoy life in their early 20s, they don't put in the work. And then later on when they hit the 30s, they're like, oh, I don't know what to do now. I don't have my life. I don't have a foundation. It's too late. Yeah. Right? Everyone's leapfrogged ahead of you. Like everyone that yeah. started strong. Exactly. Right at the beginning. Yeah. Right? And it's just it's just like it's ridiculous, man. It's just like they use it like we talk about it always. Like they use <laughs> depression as an excuse. It's not depression, man. You just, you just, yeah. you want to respond to what you're holding yourself accountable for. Yeah. You do. You no, know, I, I agree, man. That stuff like that, I feel like, you know, 
you can you can deep dive when it comes to like you know depression rates and stuff you know there are a lot of experiences like obviously we we're not professional so you know we can only you know we, we don't dive in much deep into that but people do nowadays tend to use it as an excuse to be like oh man like it's all good but Man, there's so many things we could just like talk about. We could go on for days, but you know, Yo. th- th- like I'm not even kidding when it comes to depression, it's this, that. But like in regards to like, you know, understanding everything, what life is, man, I feel like you have like a well understanding of it. You know, you're working towards that. You know, I want my life to be this. And people can actually inspire to be that. Taking, starting from ground zero, you know, having, making someone outside your culture. And you just, just refer to <laughs> taking a pay yeah. cut. Yeah. To have a household that you can be proud of and look yeah. at it, be like, we're happy. And as you said, I can sleep at night. Yeah. You know, and you, you know what's that crazy? is huge. It's, there's there's a lot of days where I don't feel I even have it figured out in my head. Yeah, like, yeah. honestly. And, and, and that's the thing. You don't have to. It's not about being perfect every day. Right? And I just, I, I don't, yeah. It, it, it seems like it's all fancy thing. Like it's a lot of work, it is, right? It and it's, um, I don't have all the answers. It's not perfect. <laughs> We're not done yet. Yeah. There's a hundred other things I want to do and <laughs> I still want to develop how the As kids are raised and all, all of these types of things are, are, are still goals, right? Yeah. So if the second you're comfortable, the second you think you got it, that's it's yeah. a dangerous spot to be it in. Is, man. Right? No, um, no, man, uh, your journey yeah. is beautiful, man. And I uh, said, your journey should be shared with many people. A lot Definitely. of people can, yeah. you know, Appreciate aspire it. to be, you know, what you, you know, been through and yeah. become something that you can be proud of, you know, regardless of where they're in life. So, you know, give us like one rundown or quick message that you say you want to give to the audience, you know, any, uh, any plugins you yeah. want to put in there and, you know, anything, man, anything, man because, um, yeah, we need more voices like you. Yeah. And I mean that. Look, um, I mean, this is going to sound like an award ceremony, right? Like, oh, yeah, I got my golden glove. Listen, if anyone, if I could do it, anyone can. It, it, it. But the truth is, I, I came unskilled into an industry that I knew nothing about, that physically I wasn't built for, um, worked my way, and there was ups and downs. At, at the end of the day, I found my passion, and that's, that's what I hang my hat on. Um, and the truth is, if someone unskilled can come into an industry and have the success that I found, who's to say you can't? You, like a- a- anyone can do it. Do it yeah. You put your mind to it. You focus on the right things. It, it takes a little bit of time. You put in the work, but you won't regret it when you get there. I really don't believe it. Yep. Uh, there you go, man. You guys heard it here first. Yep. Don't be the Debbie Down ass person always putting me back for yourself. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah. <laughs> go out and put in the work. Hey, yeah. that's all it is. Always. That's all always. it is. But appreciate y'all for coming in. Thank you, John. Taking yeah, time out of your day, man. You, man. It means a lot to us. And uh, and hopefully, you know, people can gain some insight out of this conversation. And then, yeah, man. It's a uh, yeah, beautiful conversations. And I can't wait for people to hear it, man. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for having right, me. Right, appreciate it. See you.